Hello everyone, welcome back to Speaking Spurs and me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham. I am back from holiday, which, you know, I'm going to miss it in Devon. It was a lovely location, great house, bit of peace and quiet. The only trouble was uploading my videos was an absolute pain in the backside. So uh, one of the videos took like 18 hours to do and my plan was just to do shorter videos after that. So the two that followed that first one, they were like 10, 11 minutes compared to the normal length I do. But they might go down a bit better. Let me know in the comments if you'd rather shorter videos and break everything down into other topics. But today we are going to be talking about the potential appointment of Paolo Fonseca to Tottenham. Uh, as we know with other manager links, we've said it's been close. They are saying this one's very close and could be announced early next week. Now we would have hoped that a manager would already be in place to start working on things. That hasn't happened. The Conte deal we were told was very close and that collapsed for many reasons. You know, staff issues, money. We've been over it in previous videos. So today we are going to talk about that man, Paolo Fonseca, all the ins and outs about the potential deal, things about his uh, managerial career, what he can bring to us and why fans should stop moaning about this appointment. All right, it is a bit of a, a disappointing link in terms of names, but the bigger managers that we've been linked with in the past or our first option managers usually don't work out. It's usually the backup options that do well for us, okay? So, you know, Pochettino wasn't a particularly big name, done okay with Southampton, brought him in, massive success. Harry Redknapp certainly wasn't our first option. He was brought in to dig us out the trouble that we've been left in, and guess what? It worked. One of our best managers, Martin Yol, was not first choice. Another one set us on the path to where we are now, really. So these backup managers certainly have been our most successful. And that is a reason why we should look forward to this amongst many others. So we'll talk about uh, his managerial career and stuff before we move on to the other stuff. So things you need to know about him. He's another Portuguese manager. He's 48 years old. Uh, his playing career, he's a former centre-back. Wasn't a very high profile player in his day, uh, no international caps to his name. But as a centre back coming into management, he plays attacking football, which is what we want at Spurs, what we've enjoyed over the years, and what we've been missing recently. So, you know, that's something to look forward to. If we talk about his managerial career, now I'm probably going to pronounce some of the names of these teams wrong. He started off at Estrella Amadora, coaching the youth team. Uh, that was straight after he retired. Then he went to uh, One Degree Desombro. That's another team in Portugal, but it's a women's team. Then Odevelas in Portugal. Pinhale. I'm going to get this one completely wrong. Pinhal Novense in Portugal. Now, if, can somebody in the comments, if you know that team, write it out phonetically for me so I know how to pronounce it in the future? Then he moved to Aves, which was his first pro job as a manager. They were a Division 2 team in Portugal, and he led them to third in the table, just two points off promotion. Uh, after that, he went to uh, Pacos Ferreira. He finished third with them, which was enough to secure them their first ever shot at Champions League football. So that's a massive achievement. So that was a nice little rise he'd done there. Youth football into women's football, first team football in men's, you know, then moving into a Division Two team, almost gaining promotion. Then he gets his first shot in the top league in Portugal, gets his team, Champions League football. Then after that, he moved to Porto. Um, in terms of league position, wasn't the biggest success because they finished third. He did win a cup with them. But you need to remember, like, not finishing top of the league with Porto isn't the worst thing because, you know, Sport in Lisbon, Benfica are great teams as well in that league. And also, it's a selling league. So usually what will happen, a team will, you know, emerge and do well for a couple of seasons. Teams all around Europe will come in with big offers for these players. They then move on, which weakens their team, and then the other teams around them strengthen. So it's kind of a bit of a a yo-yo tussle between the top three teams in Portugal. So to not finish top, I'm not really concerned about that. And then after that, you move back to Pacos Ferreira, uh, then move to Braga. 
Um, and I believe he won a cup with them. Then he went to Shakhtar Donetsk. It was his first job away from Portugal. Did very well there. I know Shakhtar tend to dominate their league. He did win the double in all three seasons that he was there. So he's won cups and he's won league titles. Um, obviously, we said that he'd got uh, Pacos Ferreira into the Champions League. So, you know, he's building up good experience along the way in the early part of his managerial career. Then he got that move to Roma. Oh, I would. I need to mention as well, with uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, he actually took them to the round of 16 in the Champions League as well. So with Roma, his most recent job, two seasons there, he finished fifth in his first season. Uh, and then in the second season, finished seventh, which we know isn't great. We also finished seventh. Uh, but he did get to the semi-finals of the Europa League. It was a bit of a strange season, but there are many reasons behind why you can't look at that as too much of a failure. I know seventh is not great for a team like Roma, and we've essentially just done a managerial swap with them unintentionally. You know, both of the managers became free agents. Jose Mourinho goes in there, and Paolo Fonseca potentially coming to us. Um, he has been linked with a job in England before. In 2017, he was linked with Everton. Uh, he came out and spoke about the fact that every manager would want to manage in England. You know, it's a dream of his. He hopes to get there one day. He said they have the best managers, best players, best coaches. So this sounds like if they can get the deal over the line, it's something that he wants anyway and would jump at the chance at as he's spoken previously. So this one I can actually see happening. You know, they're saying it's close. Um, they want to get it done and announced early this week. I mean, we don't want it to drag on anymore. You need to know player targets, things like that. Uh, and if Patrice definitely comes in, they need to start working together on targets, need to get players out of the club and kind of develop in their minds how they picture the team going into next season. Uh, so the deal itself, potentially a three-year deal, but what I'm actually hearing now is that it's probably going to be a two-year deal with an option for a one-year extension, which seems quite sensible. If you commit to the three years, then want to get rid of him, you get in that situation where, you know, they're they're on gardening leave and you're still paying them until they find another job whilst they're still technically under the length of contract they would have been when they left, which we had with Jose Mourinho, but luckily he found a job quickly. So we're not going to be paying him for a long time. But yeah, that's potentially it. But I do think the two-year deal with an option to extend by a year is definitely the right thing for all parties, really, because if it doesn't work out, it'll be easier for him to find a move. And also, remember, Pochettino had that extension put in. So in the back of the mind, if Fonseca has to go, we can then bring Pochettino in. So, you know, there's probably a few reasons behind that, but most of it will be financially because we know what Daniel Levy is like. If we look at his playing style, he likes to play with the ball and he's very offensive. Uh, he has come out publicly a few times saying that he really admires Sarri and Guardiola. He did mention Jose Mourinho in the fact that he did wonders for Portuguese football, but I doesn't really play the way Jose plays, thank God. But, you know, yeah, he likes the ball, very offensive teams. Uh, fluid formation so predominantly he goes 4-2-3-1 or 3-4-2-1 now that's what he did with uh, Roma and interestingly they are the two most common formations used by Poch and Jose whilst at Spurs so it's not going to be unfamiliar to the players whatsoever but it's by the sounds of it I heard somebody on I think it was We Are Tottenham TV they had a guy on there who is like a Roma Fan, an English guy, he he follows Roma, all the ins and outs, and he only had great things to say about Fonseca, which has kind of, you know, given me more of an insight about this guy and the fact that it probably is going to be a good appointment for us. Similar to the whole Pochettino thing, you know, not a big, big manager. Um, but yeah, he plays these these fluid systems and he's not afraid to change his formation throughout the week, ready to build into the next game. Whereas... I felt with Jose, it was kind of, this is the way I want to play unless we are playing one of the big teams where we will be quite happy to not have the ball and then spring on them. Whereas uh, Fonseca, by the looks of it, he just wants to have the ball no matter who you're playing and will just tweak the formation depending on who you come up against. But the style of play is certainly the same. 
So, you know, he's similar to Poch in the fact that he will change the systems match by match, you know, to suit the needs of what we need. Not not to play into the opposition's hands and try and counteract them. It's finding the best formation so we can dominate the game, which is what we like to see. I don't like any of this sitting back stuff and allowing teams to come on to us. I want to attack them. Um, his 4-2-3-1 apparently looks quite like the 3 4 2 one when in possession, which tells me that he's a manager that likes to adapt as the game goes on. You know, you've got one formation defensively, then when you attack, it becomes slightly different, which I'm a massive fan of. I think if you hold a formation when you're defending and attacking, you're predictable to defend against. So I like that. And then what he likes to do with a centre mid he likes them to drop between... This is when you're in possession of the ball. He likes the centre mid to drop in between the centre backs. The goalkeeper then comes in to help build from the back. The wing backs, full backs, they push on. The two centre backs kind of split a bit wider and almost become like a left back and right back with that holding midfielder and the goalkeeper in between them. It's almost like the goalkeeper kind of comes into like a sweeper role and they create like a, a U shape. So the idea is to build from the back. Now... When this Roma um, enthusiast was talking about the way they play, it's essentially they're either going to score a goal or concede a goal because what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to, to go and attack and you're potentially leaving spaces in behind. However, we do have Pierre-Emil Hoybier. The guy loves an interception. He reads the game well. He makes a lot of tackles. He wins possession back more than any player in the Premier League, which he did for us and in his last season at Southampton. The guy's a warrior, plays loads of minutes, and I think he will be a very, very good player under Fonseca. I mean, the, the thing Mourinho didn't do well with Hoybier, I feel, is allow him to be on the ball. We saw a few times this season he has that quality to help build play and move play on in the attacking third. So I think a little bit more trust there will benefit him. But also we know that he can drop back in the defensive line to give us a bit of protection whilst the fullbacks are further forward. However, we will need new centre-backs. You know, you need centre-backs you can trust. Um, he likes to play functional football. He loves build-up play. Uh, the wide players become inverted wingers. They come inside, which means those fullbacks, wingbacks can bomb on. Um, and also, speaking about inverted wingers, if and only if Bale is tempted to come back instead of trying to fight for another year at Real Madrid, where he could play but be in and out the side, I feel if he comes back to us, knowing Fonseca likes inverted wingers, I feel like Gareth Bale would do really well with Spurs. He loves to cut inside onto that left foot. Uh, at Real Madrid, we saw him score a fair few headers or goals from inside the box when the ball had gone out wide. So for him, I think it suits his style of play hands down. Now, I'm not trying to get you excited, guys. Um, but it could, could work if we can persuade him to come. Now, that's going to depend on Ancelotti and uh, what happens after the Euros when they go back and talk. So fingers crossed we can get him. Oh, yeah, the other great thing is he's not afraid to tweak player roles to get the best out of them. So there's a few players that he had at Roma where he slightly tweaked them, um, allowed players to attack more. Uh, defenders, he was willing to put them into like sweeper roles. And it's not just for their own development, it's for the benefit of the team to get the best out of everybody to help a fluid system. Now, Roma scored the same amount of uh, league goals as us last season, 68, which... Goes to show you that the attacking threat is there. You know, we did very well last season, the amount of goals we scored. Uh, Roma 68 put them third in the goal scoring charts. The only worry is they conceded 58 goals last season. So they conceded more than we did. But although you might say, might say defensively that makes them very weak, I don't think that necessarily comes down to his playing style. It's more the personnel that they had available. So a little bit of background about what happened at Roma. When he came in, they'd been taken over by new owners. Like when Fonseca came in, they were taken over by new owners. They had American owners. A club was sold. New American owners came in. Now, also last season, they suffered from a lot of injuries. Just to tell you how much they suffered from injuries. Remember former Spurs player Federico Fazio. 
Like, we know how slow that guy was. He has been playing still for Roma. Not regularly, but he has been getting game time because of their injuries. And need I say any more, Chris Smalling. Not the best defender. So that kind of tells you what they're working with. But, you know, they had a lot of injuries. Um, One of their best players has been out. He's done his ACL for the second time. So, you know, they've had to make do. And like Edin Zeko, like the guy's getting on now and he played a lot of games for him. But, you know, with what he had, I think like seventh is not anything to shout about, but I think what he's been through since the new owners have been there, he's still maintained the attacking style. And at times, Roma have looked very, very good on the ball. Like, don't get me wrong. Seventh is not good enough and not something we should be jumping for joy about bringing a manager in, but he's proven over his years as a manager that he's able to get the best out of teams with certain situations. So he plays a good brand of football. He's won cups. He's won titles. He's coached some big players at Roma. So it's just logical. The next step up is to go with a Premier League team. And I think for us, we could do a lot worse. Although it would have been great to get Conte in, he was probably going to require a lot more tools. Uh, Another interesting thing, he has proven to improve the goal tallies of his central midfielders. He gets them involved a lot more in attacking positions. And for us, that would be great. I mean, we managed to finish seventh last year with the top goal scorer and assist maker in Harry Kane. And then Son Heung-min was fourth in goals and assists for the season and didn't manage to finish inside the top four. Now, could you imagine... If we get a couple of new centre-backs in, if Aurier goes and we can get Matt Doherty playing the way we know he can and did at Wolves, Reguilon was a bit hit and miss defensively, but we know he's an attacking threat. We've got Ryan Sessegnon coming back as well. And he's had a very good season on loan, a very good experience. We'll come back with a lot of confidence and we'll be able to get up and down as as well there. So we've got good rotation. Uh, As for Ben Davies, I don't know what this means for him. I mean, it will come down to what formation Fonseca wants to play, but I should imagine he'll stick with what he was playing towards the end of Roma. But then sometimes they change depending on the personnel, the budget he's going to get, who we can bring in. So uh, Joachim Anderson is a defender that it sounds like we're going to get. Um, I, I don't know what Fonseca's ideas are on players, but I, I should imagine if the deal is close, they've probably spoke to him about potential targets, okay? Um, that seems to be things that they would talk about in advance because they need to know if the manager's going to be the right fit in that sense. And Levy will want to know if he can work within the constraints of the budget he's going to be given. Although apparently Daniel Levy is actually in the Bahamas on a yacht with Joe Lewis. Like, there's been some criticism about that. Like in our hour of need, why is he out on holiday? He might not be out on holiday. I'm sure he's enjoying himself nonetheless. But he may be out there asking or talking about funds that he's going to need in the transfer market because we're going to have to wait a while for income to start coming in. Like Obviously, the season tickets have been paid for, which means they've got money from that. Um, they've got the incoming like entertainment that's going to be done at the ground. So I should imagine deposits and stuff have been going in for that. Uh, so there's money for from that as well. I think they've restructured... Um, repayments for the loan that we took out for the stadium and things like that. So there is money coming in, but I feel like we're going to need a bit more from Joe Lewis to be pumped into the club whilst we're waiting for other funds to start flowing in. So I should imagine that's part of what's going on. But, you know, Conte was going to come in on 15 to 20 million a year, which is a massive amount of money, right? He was a free agent, so you save money in that sense. But, you know, Fonseca is a free agent, so he costs nothing to bring in. And there's been reports that he's only going to be paid like four million a year. So it's a complete fraction of the price. So we're saving loads of money there. It's like it's a proper Daniel Levy deal. It's like this was my top target, but I don't want to pay out for him. And I can kind of see it because Conte's going to want all his staff, which is going to cost a load of money. He's going to want loads of money in the transfer market. And it could fail. It really could, even with the investment. So I can understand from a 
business point of view why Levy wasn't willing to take the risks. And do, do you know what? The more I look into Fonseca, the more I realise he might be the right guy at this moment in time. You've got to be realistic about where we are as a club right now. Look, if they can convince Harry Kane to stay, I mean, or they could force him, you can bring Bale back, you can get a couple of new centre-backs in, bring Skippy into the squad, get Sessegnon playing, get a decent right back, or at least cover for Doherty if he's going to be first choice. Not, not even cover, I want someone to compete with him. So if you can get that, then based on the way Fonseca plays, we could have a very good season. Okay, it's going to depend a lot on how the other teams around us and in the top four strengthen. But I think be realistic, Spurs fans. Like, Don't knock it too much. Unless you've actually looked into him as a manager, don't look on just where Roma have finished and the fact that it was only Shakhtar Donetsk where he had like his mass success and they're a team that always succeed. You know, if you look back at where his managerial career started and how he's progressed, he's had a nice trajectory, just like Pochettino did. They play a similar brand of football. And this is one of the key reasons they want to bring him in. He pleases the dressing room. And I don't mean pleases as in bows down to their every demand. He has a positive dressing room. And that is something Jose is not known for. He ruffles feathers. He, he upsets players. Fonseca has been very well respected at every club he's been at. The players love him, the staff love him, and the fans have loved him everywhere. Now, that is massively important. That's what we had with Pochettino. We were all behind him, players, staff, fans. And I think that's what we need again, which is maybe why they haven't gone for Graham Potter. You know, I mean, as I've said, I wanted Graham Potter, but the more I look into Fonseca, who we weren't linked with at all, bear in mind, the more I look into him, the better it looks. So those of you out there that are slightly concerned, you know, listen to what I've said. And if you don't believe it, have a little look online. You can find the sources. You can find the links. Everything is there for you. Like go on Wikipedia. They'll tell you the stats and stuff of the teams. Have a little look on like just type in Paolo Fonseca style of play. There's plenty to read. Um, there are Roma fans out there that aren't happy about the appointment of Jose Mourinho and would have preferred Fonseca to stay. So that tells you everything you need to know. But hey-ho, like for, for me, that's it today. Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of background about the potential manager coming in, okay? But for me, it sounds like a positive move. It's good all round. It's good financially, so that will please, you know, the higher-ups. It's good for the players. It's good for the fans. So it's it's a win-win. And obviously the expect expectations on him aren't going to be over the top. So he won't come in with too much pressure. The pressure will be to get back in the top four. But the pressure will not be as much as there was on Jose Mourinho and Pochettino just before you know he left us. So all round... I'm feeling a lot happier. Hopefully they can get the appointment done Monday. That would be nice. And then we can start talking about links to players and stuff like that. Because at the moment, there's a lot of names thrown about. Um, but I don't want to go into them until we really know what Fonseca's actually looking for. But apparently the main priority is a centre-back. And I don't know why I need to say that. It's just so obvious watching our season. So it'll be an interesting one. I will keep you updated. Um, obviously, Euros have kicked off now. And our first game is coming up. And as I said, I will be reporting on those games if that's something you're interested in. So keep a lookout for that. A massive thank you to the uplifting subscribers. So the week I was away last week, I had an uplift in that week of um, nearly 60 subscribers, which is massive. Like I went from 86 to subscribers. Now I'm like 135. So massive thank you to everyone that has subscribed. You know, you are very much valued. And all of you watching that haven't subscribed, just hit that subscribe button. You know, you won't regret it. I promise you. I'm getting a lot of lovely feedback from fans about the content. They enjoy the way that I talk about things. So massive thank you for that. Continue with your comments. Um, if it's something that I can comment back to, I always do, as many of you know. So I like to keep that interaction going um, to kind of let you know that your comments are valued. I don't want to be one of these guys that just allows you to comment and then ignores it all. 
That's not what I'm about here. Speaking Spurs is a chance for me to talk about my opinions, but mainly it's to give you guys information, but put across in a way that's not just a bit like the news where it's, this is happening. I'm reporting to you live from my living room. That's not what we're about here. It's just an opportunity to have a discussion. Um, and if you comment, that gives me an opportunity to discuss in potentially future videos, which will be nice short ones. But um, I will do a question and answers video at some point. That's a plan uh, for this summer. Um, just to answer any questions you guys have with my personal opinion on it or uh, maybe information that I've heard that some of you guys haven't been able to get to. But yeah, keep an eye out for the um, the review of the England game. And if you haven't done so already, as I said, subscribe to the channel. Um, what should we aim for this time, likes-wise? Let's aim for 50 likes. I think that's achievable. So if you hit that thumbs up, if you enjoyed the video, let's get those likes up. Uh, support the channel in any way you can. So thank you for sticking around, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the, the video. Comment below your views on this potential incoming manager. And also, okay, we'll, we'll put it a different way. Instead of trying to get to 50 likes, if you like the idea of Fonseca coming in, hit the thumbs up on the video. If you don't, leave a comment saying why and who you want instead. There's been a lot of people talking about Mancini just because Italy played well in their opening game. Uh, I can't see that one happening. And I, I don't really want to wait for a manager to finish a Euros tournament uh, to possibly get him in and then he might turn around and go actually I want to stay with Italy so I think we can scrap that one so if you're going to comment Mancini don't bother it's not going to happen okay but yeah thanks for sticking around take care guys and as always come on you Spurs <laughs>